everybody. Uh, this is Chad. Welcome. Um, we're here today talking with uh, Bob Bittner, who is a local breeder extraordinaire and creator of one of my favorite products, which is called Reef Stew. And we're going to talk about both of those things um, with him. Say hi. Hi there. Um, so right now we're in his fish room. And for you and I, our fish room is probably just a tank or two and a sump. But I want you to look around here at what he's got. Um, clownfish everywhere. Absolutely beautiful. All the way down to these tiny little guys that are fantastic. And let me take you back here real quick because he just showed me. These are, and I hopefully can get them in the video. These are day old uh, Hippocampus erectus uh, seahorses. And you can see they're just absolutely tiny. Um, they eat the brine, uh, brine shrimp um, napilii right now. So they're just newly hatched, very, very tiny. And then in this, this cage over here, we have a month old um, seahorses. So these guys will eventually grow large enough to be sold. And he also has uh, orchid dotty backs. And I think you guys have seen my video of my orchid. It's one of my favorite fish. Um, good tempered dotty back. Uh, they do eat bristle worms and they're just absolutely beautiful fish. So Bob, tell us about how you got started with all this. Just need a challenge. I mean, there's one of these things where I just wanted to start with something and started doing seahorses about six years ago. It was very frustrating. I could get them to breed, but I couldn't get them to grow. So I backpedaled and started with clownfish. And the clownfish seemed to be doing pretty good. Got my hands wet with clownfish and then went back and doing seahorses. I was always looking for a challenge. So now you successfully do the seahorses and the, and the clownfish. Very successful with clownfish, still challenged with seahorses. I mean, you get higher numbers with the clownfish, but with the seahorses, there's still a lot of struggles with them. What do, you, what do you think is the main problem with the seahorses? What makes them so hard? They're very fragile. There's just too many things that can go wrong with it as far as the temperature and the quality of the foods, removing the old foods, cleaning up on the bottom of the tank. I mean, there's just so many variables with it. Do you run any uh, medications on a regular basis for any of the fish, or is it just... On the fish, no, none at all. There's no medicine in any of the systems right here. It's a closed system. Nothing from the outside comes in these systems. So we buy your clownfish, and we're we're getting pure tank-raised clownfish. We don't have to worry about any antibiotics or anything that's been Nothing in the, in the fish. Nothing comes in this room from the outside. As far as with these fish, almost 80% of the fish up here I've bred myself. I mean, they've been around some of these fish for as long as 10 years. So these are multiple generations of, of your of fish. But then some of the high dollar fish, which I have over here, I also have black and some Picasso and the snowflakes on the end tanks over here. Those I put into a quarantine tank, and they were quarantined for over a month before I actually put them into the system. Now, were they were they uh, themselves tank bred? Or yes, they, they were. Okay, so, so have you... Have you had any fish that are uh, from the wild any time in the past? Not in this system here, okay. not at all. Even the orchid dotty backs are tank raised, and the second pair is actually second generation from the pair right alongside it right over here. Okay. Even with the clownfish, this is my first pair of clownfish right over here. I purchased these in 2001. This is the very first? That's the very first one right here. I acquired this from another breeder. And then these guys right over here are second generation from this one right here. And the clowns on the very end are also second generation from this one right here. All yeah. the blacks are second generation. I had a pair of blacks four years ago from another breeder. And then these are from the offspring, which I ended up keeping and using for future breeders. So how much does being tink bred um, affect the hardiness of the fish? They're a lot more hardier, they're less prone to diseases, they're easier to feed, they're just easier to take care of, and the color is, which I would say is better than the wild. A lot of people will say the wild ones have better color, but if you're feeding them all the right foods and everything, you're going to have better quality fish than the wild. You just got to look at these as far as the color on them, how vibrant they are. And I can, I would say I can speak from personal experience because I own some of your, your clownfish um, myself and have had them for years. And I agree with you on color. My, my, uh, my orange oscillaris is, is just stunning. I mean, people look at it and 
they're really surprised. And then the the black one that I have that, I, that I've only had for a little while, it's like velvet. I mean, yeah. the, the color is just so absolutely beautiful. It's a lot to do with the foods. I mean, basically, I'm not just feeding them food. I'm enriching it with six different ingredients every night. They get a dry food in the morning throughout the day with the plants. They get frozen food at night. And it's all the enrichments that I'm doing with it. Okay. Water quality here, I'm doing a lot of water changes on this. Just on this system right here, I'm doing about 40 gallons a week. And it's probably about a 200 gallon system right here. Okay. So that kind of leads us into reef stew, which started as a way to enrich the clownfish, is that right? No, it's actually a first food for clownfish. Oh, okay. The very first food for clownfish, it's not reef stew, it's actually rotifers, but then you also need the green water with it right there. I mean, so if you're putting the green water in it, you're putting the rotifers in it, after about a week you're feeding brine shrimp, so you really have all the ingredients that's part of the product right there. Okay, so for those of you watching who may not know um, what reef stew is, Give you an example here. I have used this stuff for the like last six or seven years, and I use it to dose my tank, just like you might dose calcium or you might dose um, magnesium or something like that, um, because it it freshens up the tank. The, over time, a lot of these in fauna uh, are going to die off. You're going to have um, a lot of inbreeding and genetic problems that can. Uh, hamper your population and so bringing this kind of stuff in uh, very much helps to to spruce up your tank so what ex what's in there there's four types of algae in there i'm using a paste algae on this as far as the live stuff the zooplankton i have two different types of brine shrimp san francisco strain which is a smaller strain and the great salt lake strain what i'm doing is i'm decapsulating it which removes the shell on it there and it also cleans it. There's a lot of impurities with brine shrimp, so when you're decapsulating it right there, you're basically removing a lot of the impurities. I'll hatch it, and then I'll, after I hatch it, it goes into the stew, four different algae. So I also have that, and then I'm bringing in live adult brine shrimp, which is in this bucket right over here. What I'll do when I bring that in, I actually rinse it with tap water first, and then set it up with new salt water right here. The other stuff which is in there right now is copepods. I'm actually using the tigger pods. I'm culturing them in another room and then adding them to it. So it's a pretty well balanced product right there. So for somebody who has uh, a new tank and they want to build up a population of copepods and that kind of stuff, it's a this is a good starter. way to good it, start for it. It's a good starter. You know, the stuff that's in here, a lot of it will go down in your sand bed and will also go into your live rock. Some of it's going to get consumed right away, some of it's going to go through the filtration, but it's also going to work its way into the little dumps and crannies in your tank. A lot of aquarists, when you say algae, the first thing they think is bad. bad. And so you say this has four kinds of algae in it. Now I know that a tank has to have algae, but can you explain a little bit maybe why these particular kinds of algae and, and why people sh don't need to be afraid of adding algae to their tank? It's just like bacteria. There's good bacteria and there's bad bacteria. In this case here, there's good algae and bad algae. This is the algae which is a food source. It's like the bottom of the food chain for all your bugs and stuff that are in the aquarium. On top of filter feeders, if you have clams, you're going to need the algae for that. Feather dusters, feather stars, and some of the other pollen corals. I mean, there's a really good product for that. So this, this stuff is good for pretty much everything in our tank. It's good for everything. I wouldn't buy this exclusively if you just had a fish tank. If it was a swim tank, you know, I mean, yeah, if you had a mandarin in there, a fish like that, or some dotty backs, or small zooplankton fish that you're having a hard time getting to eat, it might be a good starter for it. So I mean, for our reef really, tanks? It's a reef tank. Product. Okay, so we want to use this in our reef tanks. It's going to feed our clams, our feather dusters, our corals, um, pretty much all the things that we want to have good nutrition yes. in our tank. Um, very good. I again, I want to I want to say that I've I've used this stuff for years, and I'm I'm very satisfied with what it does for my tank. And I can always tell by looking at my corals when I need to add some more. And It'll open up. Right. That, that I always I can always I'll look and I go ah, and then I'll go down to the the store and I'll and I'll get some. Now that brings me to a question: Is um, you have a website uh, which is reefstew.com? Yes, www.reefstew.com. And now, can can people order reef stew through you? 
No, I'm a wholesaler, and unless you have a business license, I would sell to you. But as far as individuals, I would direct you where you can purchase it in the Phoenix area. Okay, so outside of the Phoenix area, it's not available right now. We're not shipping it as of yet. You know, I'm sending some out to different wholesalers from time to time, and we're looking more into that at this particular time. So if somebody wanted it in their area, what, what would be the process they might go through to encourage you to get it to their area? Have your local fish store contact me. So if you get enough enough contacts of people outside the Phoenix area saying, hey, we can ship it. want this stuff, you will accommodate them. We will. We'll okay. ship it. And I want to encourage everybody who's out there who doesn't have this in their area um, to do that. Contact your local fish stores. Tell them about it. Have them go to uh, www.reefstew.com and tell them about it. Have them learn about this stuff at least because from my experience, you guys are missing out because here in the Phoenix area, uh, we have this stuff and it, it really will change starting your tank. I know I have noticed from personal experience my tanks cycle faster when I start them with reef stew. My tanks uh, will resist old tank syndrome. Um, you know, I, I never have any problems. My corals thrive and grow on reef stew. So I always tout reef stew. Anybody who's starting out in reef tanks, I, I always say, you've got to try this. So I want to let you guys out there know, and we have viewers all over the place, to contact your local fish store, tell them, hey, I heard about this great product on the internet, come and, and at least get us a sample. Let us let us see what it'll do for our tanks, because I think you guys are missing out. Um, and, I, and I'll say, um, Bob's not paying me to say any of this stuff. The, I have been honestly using this stuff, and this is my personal experience. That's why I'm excited to be here to see Bob's operation, to see to see the stuff that has helped my tank um, for so many years. Bob, before we go, is there anything that you want to say to these guys? And yeah, there's a lot more information on my website. Okay.